Now, I'm sure you already thought the Bracken Brothers were absolutely brilliant when it comes to phrasing as a horn section. They defined the genre. But this week, we're going to delve into a little moment in some skunk funk, and I'm going to show you that they might just be better than even you thought. <laughs> So we're going to look at a little moment from the Brecker Brothers 1975 recording of some skunk funk, the original recording. We're just going to look at where the head comes in and there are some subtleties that I want to show you which are really going to make you realise just how cool the Brecker Brothers were. So here's the chart down there and here's the little mock-up I did played at full speed. First of all, here we go. Okay, now that you've heard it through once, let's get the microscope right in on this stuff so you can learn the really cool aspects of phrasing that the Brecker Brothers use that you can apply when you play in your band or you do your covers or even if you play solo and interpret a song on your own. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the difference between staccato notes and slurred staccato notes. Now when you play a staccato note, you tongue the note and then your tongue goes straight back on the reed to cut the sound dead. However, a slurred staccato is when you come from, a, from another note and you slur into your short note, then cut it dead. As opposed to... So staccato is different from slurred staccato. Now, if we look at the start of the head here, the first note is staccato, da, then it's slurred, da, and we go into a slurred staccato. If you look at the top alto part there, which is actually the trumpet part, but it's in alto pitch, the one, two, three, the fourth note, the B, is slurred staccato. Then we've got two more staccatos. Then we've got a tenuto, which means you play the note long. Then finally, we've got a slur into another slur, staccato. So that is the phrasing for that first bar. Now I'll play it nice and slow for you. Now these are the subtleties that go beyond, hey, this is a long note and a short note. I mean, most people aren't even bothered if it's a long note or a short note, which is really bad. But even once you get into that, you have to differentiate between staccatos and slurred staccatos. Okay, now let's move on to the next bar. And you've got these, it's a bit difficult to tell how they really phrase this. But, you know, they're probably doing bebop style articulation, which is an interesting point because... Uh, people who play funk and soul and uh, all that stuff might not be interested in playing jazz, but the articulation of jazz is used in all these genres, particularly when there are fast passages. So what they're probably doing is something like I've marked there. So jazz phrasing can really work in your funk style. So that's your, that's your second takeaway point. Now, moving on. We've got something very interesting about to happen. But before we get there, first of all, you see that bar with the marcatos. Now, marcato in my kind of terminology means short but accented. Ba, 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 ba. Then we've got this bend into that high note. I'm just going to move the music along a little bit so you can see it. Where you've got the uh, D sharp in that top line. So probably what's happening is you finger the semitone beneath and you... You use your throat, the position of your throat, and uh, maybe even loosen your embouchure a bit to bend up to that note. If you're enjoying the content this week, then there's a whole lot more you can enjoy absolutely for free. Just use the link that you can see there to get free access to my Saxophone Success Masterclass. This is a classic masterclass by now that so many people have loved. And there's a bunch of really cool tips to help your playing improve instantly, get your practice, improvising, you name it. It is in there. Go and check out the Saxophone Success Masterclass. And now, back to the Brecker Brothers. Here's the really cool bit, okay? The tune comes back again, but this time it's not the same as the first time. Now, if you uh, if you know the tune, some skunk funk, you might sing... 
and you think it's the same again, but it's not. It's phrased differently. Now check this out. The first time the tune came along, it was ba ba ra ra ba 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 ra. However, this time there's a series of half-tongued notes which are quite subtle. Now, half-tonguing is when you put your tongue on the reed but not enough to stop it vibrating and it gives you a more muffled sound. So every alternate 16th note in this part of the melody is uh, muffled-tongued, you could call it, ghost-tonguing. I did a video on it last week. And when you do it, it sounds like this. I'm going to do it nice and slow for you. You probably never noticed that. I never noticed it myself until quite recently. I'll play it again from my little recording here so that you can hear what it sounds like. <laughs> it's a really cool feature and it just goes to show that the Brecker brothers have got that subtlety of phrasing and by the way let's not forget about David Sanborn who was really an honorary member of the Brecker brothers so it's the three of them Randy Brecker, Michael Brecker and David Sanborn who are playing on this track all three of them absolutely awesome in terms of phrasing and then it finishes off with dig -di -da, dig -di -da, bop, and then another scoop bop, bop, bop. Really cool stuff. These subtleties of phrasing are what really make a big difference. What we're going to do now, we're going to go back to a slowed down version that I have also recorded, and then we'll hear it sped up again. Okay, here's the slowed down version, and then we'll hear the fast version again. And actually... The third last sixteenth note of that fast run, that is also going to be half tongued. And it gives it that 3D contour, which is really awesome. You can just hear it in there, right? Do it indeed, do it indeed. That's that half tiny section. Great horn writing as well, sections of unison and then sections of harmony. And the parallel harmonies that they use in this are absolutely awesome. You can tell it's got that really crazy sort of outside fourth type sound. Fourths and triads, that's what they use a lot to make those really, really cool horn voicings. Right, let's hear it again now at full pelt. <laughs> <laughs> now, I might get my video, you know, copyrighted, but let's now hear the Brecker Brothers and David Sanborn play it just to finish off so you can hear the real deal. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. So that's what we've got time for today. Remember, you can get a bunch of really cool tips and tricks to instantly transform your playing using my Saxophone Success Masterclass. I will be going into a few more great Brecker Brothers moments inside the Inner Circle, which is like a really awesome membership. It's your best way to get access to me. It's practically your only way to get access to me, to be honest. And um, there's a really great community. There's so much great content. There's a bonus video every week. There's a monthly project, which, uh, which you can win a lesson with me just by entering, which is quite awesome. And we have superb guests like Ernie Watts and Lenny Pickett and Alexa Tarantino and you name it, a whole galaxy of stars. So go and check out the Inner Circle. It's a great place to be if you love saxophone. If you've bought me a coffee, you are the best. And if you want to buy me a coffee, 
you will be the best and every read you ever play will work out nicely because of the karma you've created for yourself. <laughs> In the meantime, until next week, practice hard, practice smart and enjoy your Brecker Brothers. Take it easy. That might just make you realise that they're better than you even thought. That's completely rubbish intro, guys! Ha, 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 ha.